This is Brenda Starr with Backstage 360 here at the world famous Coach House. I'm here, uh, we just did a live stream with Mark Bonilla. Yep. How you doing? I'm doing well now. Awesome. I'm, just, I'm past it now. I don't have to, I can relax now. So. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we did this for Alert the Globe and you might see some noise and some commotion going on behind us and that's just uh, the crew doing their thing. Mm -hmm. um, but God, you blew me away, Mark, no, with that set. You. That was like the quickest 90 minute. I mean, it was, was I, it was I couldn't believe it was over. It was only 60 minutes. That's why it was a quick 90. Oh, okay. Yeah, you changed yeah. it up on I thought you were going 90 minutes. <laughs> no, okay. So, oh, okay. It, was a, it was a boring 60, but a quick 90, right? Hey, whatever you did up there, you, that yeah, was well, powerful. I found, I found myself saying, wow, like just out no. loud, involuntarily, oh, several well, times. You. Yeah. Well, it's fun music to play, you know, and I've, I've got these guys. I'm so honored to play with these guys. Some of these guys I've played with since 91. You know, so it's in, in all, and with like Joe Travers, it was the first time we did back here since the Boys Club, which was Ronnie Montrose, Keith Emerson, and Glenn Hughes. So yeah, we love this place. Couch House is a wonderful place yeah. to play. And everybody's stir crazy because, you know, we haven't been able to play out. So this is a wonderful breath of musical fresh air for everybody. Exactly. Just to come out and just kind of flex a little bit, you know. Yeah, so. making the best out of it. Yeah, so it's absolutely. it's Mark Bonilla and the Dragon Choir. Yes, it is. They were not dragon. No, they weren't. It wasn't that type of dragon. <laughs> Not the G-G-I-N apostrophe. This was the G-O-N. Yeah. Right. Kind yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Powerful. Very powerful. Uh, I mean, you've been playing with these guys a long well, time? I have. Yeah, but Joe Travers, uh, a long time. Uh, Ed Roth, a long time. Mike Wallace, a long time. Jonathan Sindelman and Thomas Lang, are, I've had a relationship with them uh, playing for maybe two years now. Maybe three years, actually. And, uh, you know, just wonderful players. You know, yeah. incredible guys to work with wow you know? so, and travis davis i you know was in the keith emerson band with me and, and cta and all that so yeah we go back wow. a ways you know? wow well let's let's talk about the, the latest album first yeah. album in 25 years yeah. is that correct yeah i you know i had been doing a lot of other things back in like the 90s you know i'd done two solo albums for warner brothers and i didn't feel like doing another one i think I, i'd been that way and i was getting into soundtrack writing so I hooked up with James Newton Howard. We did a, a clique of films together and uh, with some other composers. And then I kind of got on the, that bandwagon for like 20 years or so and was composing for uh, different TV shows, uh, played guitar for things like Iron Man and Born Identity, and then scored with uh, Steve Carl. We did all the seasons of Justified together. So I had to learn to play banjo and, you know, harmonica and stuff that, you know, just so we could keep it in house yeah. to some degree because we were having to do it was so quick, you know, having to do the turnaround. So, yeah, so I got into doing all of that as well. You know. Well, I noticed you had a guitar with like a lot of uh, superheroes oh, on yeah, it. Are those yeah. all movies that you've done? Well, no, that was all of those. See, everybody asks what my early influences are, and they expect to see Hendrix or <laughs> There's no, it was Spider Man, you know, uh, those guys. I was a huge comic nerd. I still have all my comics bagged and boarded. And when Yamaha was making guitar, made this guitar for me, they didn't want to know what I wanted on it. So I said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm, I dug out all my old comics, and I got some illustration board, and I drew each one of those characters. And they photographed it and inlaid it into the, into the, the you know, the finish. So, you know, that was back in 91. See, I had Black Panther on here before it was cool to have Black Panther on anything. Where I'd point him out, and go, "Who's that? I don't know who that is. That's Black Panther. It's the first Black American, uh, first Black superhero. What's wrong with you? You know." And so, you know, I'm, I'm a huge comic fan from way back. So that's like a testament to my early childhood. You know. Ah, right on. So, yeah, I never heard that one before. Well, you Been won't influenced. hear it again. <laughs> but you did do some of those movies, right? Yeah, Iron yeah. Man. Matter of fact, what? because of that guitar. We got the Iron Man gig. Well, it was over. John Debney was doing the music, and he said, "Look, I need somebody to come in and do this." So, uh, the, the execs were coming over from Marvel, and so we had we were working on a piece. So I said, "I know the guitar to bring." So I brought the guitar, and they were like, "Dude, where'd you get?" You know, I said, "I had that made. I'm a huge, you know." And I was citing like episode or like comic issues, what was happening in the comic issue. They knew I was gone. Yeah, you know, I was just like totally overboard comic nerd. And they said, "Well, man, with 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 your chops and your your passion for that, we can't." We couldn't find anybody else better than that. So that got us the Iron Man kick. Wow. Or part of it, obviously, was John Debney's writing. But still, it was it was a symbiosis of that. And that didn't hurt. You know, wow. So, yeah. yeah, I was going to ask you, like, how, how do you get into composing, right? I mean, well, that is it, it, for, it, for movies, anyway. Yeah, for me, it was I was on the Mark and Brian uh, show uh, mm -hmm. in L.A. Yeah. And I ended up doing the, the musical direction for all the Christmas shows. I did that every year for them. 
But we were on one year, and uh, James Newton Howard had heard us on there. We used to be in a band called Toy Matinee, and we were on there doing some stuff. And James knew our manager, Doug Buttleman, and, and he called Doug and says, what, uh, what, who's the guitar player? You know, and he said, that's Mark Benny. He's new in town, just come. He says, man, uh, can I, I'd love to use him on, you think you want to do some film stuff? You know, I was like, are you kidding me? I loved them. <laughs> right. I was over there, and, you know, and so we did, the first thing we did was like Digstown, uh, American Heart, that we did like Waterworld, uh, you know, uh, again, like Born Legacy, some other ones, uh, Green Lantern, you know, a lot of superhero stuff just happened to be. But, uh, and then, you know, I would write some things for them, and then other people would catch wind, and then it just, it just kind of was a, you know, one person would say, hey, would you want to feel like writing for, for this or that? And it, it kind of progressed that way, you know. Nice, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you played with a lot of greats, people like Ronnie Montrose, yeah, Ronnie Glenn Hughes, Glenn Ronnie. Hughes, Edgar Winter, uh, Spinal Tap. Yeah, yeah. I just actually, <laughs> I just finished an album with uh, Harry Shear. It's called The Many Moods of Donald Trump, and he's going to be releasing it. And they're wonderful. Just C.J. Vanston is was, was producing it, and and co-writing with with uh, Harry, and and you know it was great. I got kind of free reign to do what I wanted to on the on the songs. And uh, so, yeah, that'll be coming out very soon, all of that. So, that, yeah, it's, it was wonderful. And, and plus, the, yeah, the Derek Smalls band we did, just a great group of people to work with. I got to work with my old drummer, Toss Panos, from way back uh, in Toy Matinee, and we mm -hmm. got to work again. Yeah, just, you know, a great, great group. It's like a family, really like a family. So very it's nice. hardly work. Yes, know. yes. Well, yeah, you seem to definitely enjoy what you're doing. Well, why? Why would you not want to enjoy what you do? Right. Well, you a know, lot of people do, but I yeah. I know they don't, but it's only because they don't have the courage to actually do what their heart tells them to do. There's nothing stopping you from doing that, because that's what you were basically designed to do, what you have a passion for when you were 10 years old. If everybody did for a living what they loved at 10 years old, nobody would be depressed. Listen to this man. He knows. <laughs> he knows. I just exactly. got lucky. I had supportive parents, still do, and, uh, you know, and supportive friends. And I, 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 I chose my friends well, you know, and... and beautiful wife and supported me so awesome. all of that stuff yeah you know, and yeah. Awesome. yeah is that why you don't have a singer <laughs> uh, well I sing I actually sing singer, but I yeah. just tonight we were we haven't had an hour so we yeah. I, we cut it down to oh okay yeah, so, so you do oh, you, yeah. you're I sing. The I, I fronted uh, UK with Eddie Jobson that uh, Keith Emerson band I was a singer in Keith Emerson mm -hmm. band and yeah I was gonna you say you, you and then you also do don't are you doing another uh, project uh, Emerson Project. Well, yeah, the the uh, it's it, we we did this three was it three years. God, I can't remember how long ago. No, it was more than that. Four years ago, uh, the Keith Emerson tribute concert, which I've been jealously guarding because people wanted to make a lot of money on it, and for me, I wanted it as a as a charity event. We brought in all these great A list players from L A. to do all the Emerson, Lincoln, Palmer, and Keith Emerson stuff at the um, El Rey Theater. And uh, so now we, some legal hurdles have been kind of taken away. So we're gonna we're trying to get this out by the end of the year. Wow. Uh, so it's yeah the Keith Emerson tribute yeah. concert. Yeah. So you do the tribute, but you actually played with the oh, man yeah, yeah, himself. Yeah, 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 yeah. They asked sure. me to do it because I played with yeah Keith and we're like for the last last 25 years of his life we were like partners doing stuff mm -hmm. together, working on orchestral stuff and everything. That yeah. was great for me. I, he was a hero of mine growing up, so for me it was wonderful. And, right. You know, yeah, exactly. Well, and you're also involved with the Ronnie Montrose Remembered. Yeah, the, yeah, the Montrose. See, yeah, I was, uh, I took his place in Gamma when we did it, and that yeah. uh, up in, in the San Francisco Bay Area, and it was great. Got to drum with Carmasi, got to play with mm -hmm. Glenn Ledge, you know, and, and uh, you know, Davy Patterson, you know, the original guys, all sweethearts and. So yeah, and that was the music I, I grew up on, and like I say, Ronnie and I kind of, we, we were very close friends for a long, well, for Do, a want, long do you want to share a favorite memory? A favorite memory uh, with Ronnie? Everybody loves Ronnie. Yeah. I, right? Yeah. Everybody does. I, there's, there's so many. I, you know, um, and most of them I can't repeat in public. <laughs> Those are my favorite ones, so, you know, uh, yeah, I'll keep those to myself. Okay, good, good. You are a good friend. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. Keep, his, keep his name clear. Yeah. No. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Oh, that's so awesome. But, yeah, that was so powerful. This is, it was music that didn't need any, it didn't need any words. Well, so you powerful. have to understand that, that music, like anything else, is storytelling. It doesn't matter if it's lyrics or if it's a melody line. The same rules apply. It's a narration. You have to... Uh, tell a story and that means you have to it's subject to punctuation you need exclamation points you need question marks you need commas you need paragraphs you need all that stuff and you do that with your musical values your notes and all of that stuff your thematic development you know uh, you're making things sing where you, it yeah. doesn't necessarily have to be a voice 
could be a guitar, could be a keyboard, could right. be a trumpet, could be anything, uh, which is what a classical music is. It tells a story, mm -hmm. and everything's all about Tori's storytelling. So that's that's what's important. So if you tell a good story, you can hold somebody's interest. If it's a good plot, if it develops, if it has dynamics, all of that things. It's yeah. no different. Yeah. So it was just music storytelling, you know. Yeah. It worked. Yeah, I was gonna say like so you're just you're put channeling all your emotions yeah. into those songs. Or somebody's emotions. You yeah. know. I don't believe it comes from you, I think it comes through you. Yeah. You yeah. know, like writing. I none of it comes from me. You know. It, once you start to think that, once you start to think that music comes from you, then you're a finite source. And that's where writer's block comes into gear. I've never had writer's block. I've always been able to come up with something. Because I, I, for me, it's like, it would be like going out into the desert with a canteen of water, right? Okay, it's good for a while, but at some point the canteen's gonna run dry, all right? If you look at music and inspiration as a river that runs alongside that desert, and anytime you need any, you go over and you dip your cup out of it, you'll know it's an inexhaustible pool of resource. You don't ever have to worry about going dry. And so that's what it's like, you know, writing or, or playing or any of that stuff. It's like the firemen up there. They're reading their magazine. They're looking at the soap opera. All of a sudden, the fire alarm rings. They come down the pole. Well, that's what the muses are. They come, what do you need? You know, and the, what their fire alarm was was a little bit of this or a little bit of that. So you just have to be open to that. Any writer, they have to be open to it. So That makes perfect sense because I could just feel yeah, it. Well, I could feel it. It was, it, was, it comes through yeah. you. Look at Hendrix at, at Woodstock doing the Star Spangled Banner. He ain't there. You know, his fingers are all over. You see the split screen, he's like, yeah. he's nowhere near. Yeah. You know, yeah. channeled. It was all channeled. Well, and what you said about the punctuation, that made so so much sense because there, there yeah, just, yeah. I mean, well, that's it. can't it's, say it any yeah, better than how he just said it, but <laughs> I was here and I'm still blown away. No. I really yeah. am blown yeah. away by that 16 it's, minute yeah. show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, good. I'm glad. I'm yeah. glad. And again, like I said, I have a lot of help with these guys. These guys are so wonderful. I'm so honored to be part mm -hmm. of them, you know, part of the group. And, they're, they're just there for me all the time. Wow. Well, it's a family. It yeah. really is. And it's been a family for a long year. And that's it shows when you play. We have such a good time together. You know, no weirdness. There's been never any weirdness in any of the players, any, any, any of the guys. Well, because you're picking the right people that aren't coming from the yeah. ego. Well, it's all about the hang, too. You know, if you can't yeah. hang with somebody, you can't play with them on stage. If you get it, it's bloody obvious that you can't. You, know, you can see that lack of chemistry, you know. But when you're, you know, if you can hang with people, yeah. that's, that's the best way. Well, and it was, it was... Yeah, it was, that was obvious. You saw that, and you even changed players three. Yeah. What, what's the reason? You just want to include everybody, well, or do yeah, you wear I them mean, out? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I would love to include everybody that I played with. You know, it just yeah. isn't enough time. But but you know, I love Joe's playing. I love Thomas's playing. Two different styles. Mm -hmm. You know, so the music fit Thomas's style, and then the other music fit Joe's style. Even though they could play everything. Yeah. You know, I just it's it's variety. It's like a new actor yeah. coming into a scene. You know, it's yeah. a new character actor. I was bummed for a second because I was like, oh no, he's leaving. He was such a great drummer. Oh, but yes. then I was like, no. I'm like, oh, just trust it. Yeah, I think yeah, Mark yeah, knows yeah. what he's doing yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. And then he came up and he was amazing yeah, as well. Yeah, he's yeah. wonderful. And then Ed, you know, I wanted him to play piano. There wasn't piano on the first tunes, but I wanted him part of it. You know, because he's been, again, we've been together since like '91. Yeah. And it's always good to have a wingman over there that you know. You know, it, it makes you feel secure. You're kind of in your bedroom or your living room, you know, with all these guys, you know. Yeah. You know what they're going to do. They know what they're capable of. Well, that's smart. Yeah, because a choir can be, it can be many people. They can change out. Somebody else Absolutely. has got something else going on, or I'm yeah. sure some of these guys have other projects, oh, as you do. do. Yeah, yeah. Do. yeah. We all come back, and that's the thing, is we've been friends for so many years, and it's always, it, that, that, it's, like, it's like, you know, seeing an old friend after a long time. You can almost pick up right where you left off. Like, so what were you saying 10 years ago? Oh, that's right. So anyway, I said, you know, and then you just, you continue. You know, you have your friends like that, that, that it doesn't matter how long you've been away. Yes. You just pick up where you left off. Absolutely. There's no, there's no, there's no time. Time yeah. doesn't matter. Right. Because you're, psych you're just psychologically in, in each other's brains all the time. It's great. Yeah. yeah. You know. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Oh my gosh. So. How do people keep up with you if they want to find out, like you know, what's going on? And, and well, I'm sure you're going to yeah, do some website. more live shows I as will soon as be you doing can. Some more and some other things that will be coming up, you know, in the in the next few months. Uh, my website, which is markbaniamusic.com, and that's M-A-R-C, B-O-N-I-L-L-A music.com. Uh, you can find cellular debris. You can find the albums there and whatever I'm doing. Uh, yeah, it's it's a general good way station to find out what's going on. So you know, with all the projects, uh, yeah. you know, be doing. Right on. So, yeah. Well, very good. Is there anything else that you want to get out to? No, the you've done watching? such a good job. Oh, well, yeah, thank I, you, you covered everything. So uh, it's yeah. Yeah, that I was amazing. Nothing. Well, I do want to. How do you name the songs? Just by how the, do I name them? Yeah. Uh, but, some of them I uh, they come as dreams. Like I'll, I'll wake up going, "What's the, the eruption of John Minimum? What the hell is that? I don't know. But I'll write a song with that, and you know. But other ones, it, it's whenever I write. 
I always get mental pictures I, or, or visions of something, not visions, but I mean images, I'll say, mm -hmm. of, of one thing or another. And I, I think about how I respond after the song is written. I never titled a song before, <laughs> and it's always after. Well, how does it make me feel? What does it make me feel? What does it make me visualize at that point? And then I find a title that, that, that works in that way. That way I'm responding emotionally to the song, and it tends to, you know, it's like when you name a pet, right? You name it usually according to its its personality, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah, same thing. But you can't name it before you get it, right? I don't right. know anybody does that. Okay. Yeah. So you're, you're naming your pet, basically, you know, afterwards. Very good. Wow. That's so awesome. So I imagine, like, you meditate and all of that, right? You, well, you know what? Music is meditation. Yeah. You know, driving is meditation. Gardening is meditation. It just means your brain has to be idle mm -hmm. in order for cre to, create, to create things. Yeah. That's why I still have a flip phone. And the reason I have a... No, listen. Really? The reason I have a flip phone is for that reason. I hate smartphones for the reason that it's such a distraction for creativity because in order to create you have to be bored you have to your mind in other words has to be idle if you have a, a single child and you've raised a single child right their imagination is usually much more developed because they have to create friends for themselves they have to create situations to keep them entertained that's where those creative chops come from if every time that someone's bored they just pick up the phone and, and distract themselves there's no idle time you have to have an idle mind for ideas to come in, and that's what meditation is. It's all about keeping your, your mind idle, not having all kinds of stimuli going on. What the phones are doing is it's, it's not allowing kids to daydream, and that's a problem. I was always in school going, God, I hate fucking math, you know, and I'd be thinking of other things, you know, because I was so bored with what was going on. But that's where your, your, your mind, it's fruitful that way. That's why there's no good music coming out. Well, you said it, I didn't. But I'm just saying, it real, I mean, it, look, if Michelangelo had a cell phone, he wouldn't have done the Pieta. He'd be on with Da Vinci going, so, did you see this? I'm going to send you this instead right. of working on David, right? You need to have downtime. It's so important, just even if you aren't creating, just to have downtime. So my flip phone is no distraction. I use it to call people, maybe to text. That's it. If I need to get online, I can find whatever I have to do, but it doesn't get in the way of creativity. So I think it's real important. I'm sure I'm in the minority on that, but I don't care. It's what works for me, you know. So. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. I really you. enjoyed the whole The repartee, the whole thing. as it were. Yep. There you go. Yeah. yeah. It's French Very one. good. All right. Yeah. So this is Brenda Starr for ben Backstage 360 <laughs> with All Mark right. Pania. Rubbing elbows. Yeah, baby. Woo! Hey, where's my drink? Oh. <laughs> we're out of here. Hey, this is Brenda Starr with Backstage 360. Can we start? What's on your mind, Brenda? <laughs> what she meant to say was Backyard 360. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> it's the music did it to me. <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> See, I told you things would work out. Right? Just get that off your chest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <clears throat> wow. Okay. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>